Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I've got something to share with you that has never ever once been done on YouTube before. So this will be a first. I'm just, I'm just kidding. It's probably been done a million times, but it's not been done on my channel. So let me share with you what I got. I think, I think you'll find it interesting. So on the floor here before your eyes is everything, almost everything, that we need to build a custom trailer. Now this is going to be a really a heavy duty trailer for a plate compactor, which is a small in size but heavy in weight piece of, just a piece of industrial equipment. So we've got our steel here cut in the basic shape that we need. We're going to have to be notching some of these I-beams. This thing is overbuilt, I can tell you already, but better underbuilt, or better overbuilt than underbuilt. Better overdone than underdone, I guess, unless you're talking stakes. But let me show you what we got. It, there's a lot to do here, even though it's kind of in kit form, still a lot. So I have already been hard at it today, and I'm trying to get this done, hopefully before the sun goes down. I'm, it's not gonna work, but I'm gonna try to do that. I've been doing breaks today brakes, packing wheel bearings, and cleaning greasy, nasty stuff. That's why I'm so filthy. I figured, why not just go ahead and knock this out and burn myself all to pieces as well. And, uh, as well. So, uh, we've got an axle, we've got a tongue, we've got two heavy-duty trailer tires, we've got springs and shackles, hubs, we've got U-bolts. This is a 2,000-pound axle. Let me let me show you. Ultra toe is what it says. Watch this. That's 2,000 pound axle. So everything that we have here is rated for more than what the unit that this is going to carry that weighs. So all of this was relatively well thought out. Uh, and by, let me show you what it comes with. I mean, let me show you why I'm showing myself because I haven't looked at this at all. Uh, so that, yeah, okay. So that's what we're going to use with our with our U-bolt kit and our springs. I think. Yeah, that'll work. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is just lay out the, the floor or the chassis, the bed the, of, of the trailer, figure out how all of that's going to go together, get our spacing, figure out how we're going to notch these uh, I-beams to fit inside of this channel, and then, uh, you know, buzz it together or grind it, buzz it together, get that going first, and then we'll move on, on to the rest of the stuff. So to square up this frame, I am using my... These are some cast fireball tool squares with little tabs on them. Super nice for this kind of stuff. You just kind of set them on there. And they hold themselves and you can kind of, you know, shimmy and shift everything, you know, to get it, to get it right. <laughs> Quit bite me, girl. Okay, you wanna hold that tight? She's helping.
Well, looks like I failed getting that uh, trailer done before the sun went down. Uh, that was an ambitious goal anyway, but I had company show up. That's what I'm going to blame it on anyway. Not that I would have possibly got it done before the sun went down, but you get the idea. Uh, I failed, so I guess I will see you tomorrow just like this. All right, so it is tomorrow. So now let's get started building up this trailer frame. So welding stuff square and flat is kind of tough to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just tack the four corners right in the middle, kind of, so I can still twist the beams if I have to. I can torque it a little bit, get it, get it square. I'll position these cross members. I'll start tacking those and just working my way around this thing slowly, continuously checking to make sure that it stays flat and square within reason. It's going to be welded and nothing, nothing that's welded is flat or square, but you can get them close if you're careful. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a little uh, weld pro and uh, buzz this thing together. Ain't that right, Cora? Let's do it. Oh, goodness. Grab the other end. Ah, and low. So we got it all just tacked. Everything is just tacked in position. Now I'm gonna double check what I did. I'm just gonna kind of take it slow around this thing. At least in my opinion, uh, the, the trick to getting something square is not squaring it up in the beginning and then just going at it and welding it hot and heavy quickly because then stuff torques and twists. But if you've got a lot of weld points that you have to weld, if you can just tack them all, um, you know, that helps to hold everything in position. Check it. If you do have to cut anything loose, it's just a tack weld. You know, if you have to change something. So, so that's kind of the way that I go about it, is just square everything up, lightly tack everything, double check, adjust if I have to, and then, you know, work my way around it. To trying to kind of st strategically, carefully, whatever you want to say. You get the idea. That's what I do. Seems to work.
So I figured I'd stop for a second and let this little welder take a break. Not an industrial welder. It's not a $4,000 welder. I think this thing was like $900 or $1,200, something like that. It was sent to me. I didn't pay anything for it. Weld Pro actually sent me this welder, the little MIG welder, and my Weld Pro uh, TIG welder up there. No strings attached. They didn't say, you got to say this. You know, we're, we won't send them to you. None of that stuff. I wouldn't be interested in it in them if that was the case. Just if you like them, you know, use them. That was it. And so far I have. You guys have seen me use this. I built that truck with this welder. Did a lot of welding, floors, quarters, uh, frame repairs, you name it on that truck. I've almost got all of the welding done on Elizabeth's uh, crew cab dually, Johnny Cash. And I've built countless projects with both of these welders and I've had zero problems. So... You know, just a little, just a little piece of advice. If you're looking for a cheap welder, I can say that these are decent, and I've had good luck with them. At work, I use a, a Dynasty a 200 most of the time. Probably once a day, I'll weld something with a, with. For the last 15 years, that's what I've been using as a Miller Dynasty. So I know what a good welder is. This one has been reliable. You know, there, uh, is it something you'd want to set up on an assembly line or weld constantly all day without giving it a break? No. But is it something that you could build your projects with in your driveway? Absolutely. I like this little machine, to be honest. It's always just been a couple buttons pushed and go at it. And it just buzzes away like an angry bee and uh, is relatively strong for its size. So oh God, don't don't jump. It's not worth it. So before I buzz these leaf springs on permanent, I just got them just a little pea-sized tack on each one. I'm going to assemble this axle, put the tires on it, and make sure that they clear. And I don't have to move this in just a little or anything. So that's what I'm going to just double check, make sure. I don't want to get it all buzzed together and then figure out I have to cut it back apart. So these hubs, ultra toe, they uh, look pretty good actually. Got the studs, They've got a grease fitting on the actual hub itself. So you don't have to pull the dust cap or anything to add a little grease to these. These are, the, I mean, this is like redundancy here. We got a uh, grease fitting in the end of the axle and it's drilled that way you, never have to remove the hub. If you burn these up, it's your own fault. 
easy degrees. So I pulled the axle back off this thing because of the width of the axle and how the leaf springs actually connect to the axle. It brings in the leaf spring supports uh, too far where they're not fully supported by the side rails and I don't like that. So what I'm going to do to fix that problem and because this is steel and it's just forever, um, you can forever modify it, what I'm going to do is just add a little piece. That's what I love about steel. I'm just going to add a little piece here. All four corners give my leaf spring uh, brackets similar to fully seat and that'll that'll make me happy let me show you the fastest way that i have to cut steel because i'm running out of time to finish this thing so this is the fastest way that i have by far to cut steel it's my hypertherm 45 xp plasma cutter this thing's awesome. Absolutely love this thing. You can gouge with it. You can blow out spot wheel, small spot wheels with it. I mean, you can do you can do all sorts of things with this unit. It don't weigh anything either. Very very nice. So I need four strips. This is quarter inch thick mild steel plate. So I'm just going to cut four strips and then, then I'll cut them to the, to the length that I need.
Come on. Come on, little girl. Come on. So now it's time to attach the tongue to this trailer. I wonder why they call it a tongue. It doesn't really look like a tongue, but that's, uh, that's what it's called. That's what I've always called it. Um, who knows? Origins of words. Sometimes you just wonder. So what I'm going to do, because this is a lot thinner, this, it's a factory-made tongue. It's quite a bit thinner than the rest of the material. If I welded this to the trailer, it wouldn't be three weeks of using this thing, it would fatigue, break off, and then whatever piece of equipment on that you had on this, and the, the base would just shoot down the road behind you. Um, so what this needs to do, at least in my opinion, is it needs to be bolted uh, to, the, to the frame of the trailer. And if you look at the back of this, it's got, this is a factory tongue, it's got uh, provisions for a pin. So I'm gonna make a bracket to where I can pin it at the back. Somewhere back here, one of those cross braces. And then maybe a couple U-bolts, one here, maybe one here. That's what I'm thinking. I think that's probably the most secure way to attach this to the trailer. So let's see if we can't come up with a bracket for back there.
All right, for the sake of this video, this trailer is 100% done, even though it's not complete. I'm out of time. I am super happy with the way that this came out. I enjoyed the change of pace, so thank you for following along uh, with this build. This is the first trailer I've ever built. Uh, I'm really happy. Stayed square, stayed flat. Uh, there is a problem. I was just informed that there is a magic ratio between the, from what I was told, uh, not a trailer surgeon, between the tongue length and axle placement to make a trailer pull optimally, and I did absolutely none of that. All I did was place this axle in the middle of the trailer and stuck that tongue on there where I thought it looked good. So, potentially I may have to cut the perches off, which is fine, it's not a big deal, and shimmy that axle one direction or the other and reposition this tongue. I would like to get it as good as it can be uh, for my buddy Al because uh, he's good to me and I want to help him out as much as I can. So, super happy with this. You could put anything you want on this that's below 2,000 pound and it would haul it. The flat on this trailer, at least the chassis frame, whatever you want to call it, is more than strong enough for anything. The axle and the leafs is definitely the limiting factor and the tongue, maybe, on this thing. It looks really good. If it was mine, I believe I'd put like a 3 uh, sheet steel on it as a, as a floor, and this thing would last forever. Um, but, you know, even a 3 quarter inch sheet of plywood on there, if you was going to haul like steel or anything, would be nice because then the steel wouldn't slide around. A couple of fenders, awesome little trailer. It didn't take me but a couple afternoons after work uh, to get this thing finished. So I enjoyed it. I appreciate you guys following along. Change pace. A lot of cutting, and grinding, and welding, but it was fun. So that is it. Thanks for watching. Uh, viewers, patrons, subscribers, anyone who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Ain't that right, girl? We'll see you next time. <laughs>